Right. So sometimes when you paint your wall, um, you might come to an intersection where you have a sealant, okay? See, for example, near the um, cistern tank. And I've summed out, you know, to where I've got, you know, the sealant in between the wall and, you know, the PVC shelf. Or plastic right behind the cistern tank. So I had the green frock tape between the wall and the plastic and recoated or overcoated and once again, you know, the white paint that was previously on the wall. And it turned out to be quite a good match. And that's pretty much because white kind of like blends with white, so you wouldn't really have an issue. But if you decide to overcoat, you know, the base coat white with an overcoat of green, you might have, you know, the green latching on to the sealant. Even if there was masking done with, you know, the frock tape over the white sealant. You might just about get away with it if you take off the masking, but it wouldn't look aesthetically very good. And if you try cleaning off, you know, the olive green paint from the white sealant, um, you'd have, you know, a pretty tacky or messy job. In some instances, you might get away with it, but it wouldn't look aesthetically very pleasing. When you paint with contrasting colours, you're always looking for a crisp finish between lines, okay? As opposed to, you know, the paint overlapping, you know, on, you know, the white sealant, which is a different colour. And how do you get a crisp line? Or a fine line between the green olive paint and the white sealant? I kind of get around this problem, you know, by just merely taking off the sealant, okay? You kind of want, you know, the sealant to sit on the paint and not the paint, you know, to sit on the sealant. So it's more like, you know, you're getting off the old sealant and you're going to impress that or, you know, the sealant is going to, the new sealant is going to stay on the, um, the new green olive paint. And when I'm done, you will see the difference, okay? So here I am using a standing knife and taking off, you know, the sealant that's right between uh, the plastic that's in front of the tile and the wall. And subsequently making sure that every bit of old sealant is taken off, okay? Then run the green frog masking tape over the white plastic that's between the tile and the green wall. So that I can paint around the areas where the old sealant was sat, you know, the old sealant that I've just removed. Then as soon as the paint dries off, you know, run another masking tape which will be the area or the gap where the new sealant would sit on. And as you can see, I've pretty much, you know, run, you know, the masking tape, you know, around the wash basin. You know, where it's going to be curved, it's curved. Where it's going to be straight, it's straight. You know, just be quite imaginative with how you want the um, sealant to sit on the um, wash basin, okay? So I've also got my 180 grit sandpaper, which is my fine sandpaper, and the coir sandpaper, which is the 80 grit. You know, just in case. Say per chance, I take off the um, the masking tape after applying, you know, the new sealant, and I get peeling off. You know, I can sandpaper that with a coir sandpaper, fine tune it with the eighty grit sandpaper, and then repaint over it. Okay, so it's it's pretty common when when you do a lot of paint work that sometimes you find out that, you know, the paint comes off. So I've got me little green olive paint here on standby just in case I've got any peeling issues. That may arise as a result of, you know, the wall not being properly primed, you know, you've got water, you know, bubbling on underneath the paint or the paint not fully being dried. Or that, the, you know, the paint on the wall is an old paint and it was only overcoated once and it's quite flaky. You know, a host of reasons could um, cause peeling, but to pick up from where we left off, you know, double mask, you know, the gap that you want to apply the sealant on. From here, I will be showing you how to redo the sealant or reseal the sealant around your wash basin and behind the cistern um, in your bathroom. Can be quite tricky when you change the colour from white um, to a different colour because white pretty much blends with the sealant but when you change the colour you find out that the olive green paint with the previous sealant didn't blend in well it looked quite tacky so I had to take out the sealant you know sandpapered you know the um, surface wiped it with a microfiber cloth and painted over the surface, applied masking tape. And now the next step of the process is to apply sealant between, you know, both of the masking tapes, okay? So that the new sealant sits properly on the olive green painting. The previous color of the wall was white and despite the fact that, you know, masking tape was covered all over the um, old sealant and you know paint and the new and the wall was painted um, olive green it still looked quite tacky okay so that's why I had to rework the process so that aesthetically it looked quite decent so here 
I'm applying the sealant at 90 degrees push fit as opposed to 45 degrees and if you want to see how I selected the sealant and um, the Fuji kit profile and why the application is at 90 degrees click on the link in the description it should take you to the respective videos after applying the silicone sealant I will be using the Fuji profile to profile um, the gap or to spread the sealant around you know the masking tape area that's been cordoned off with tapes on both sides between the sealant with tapes it could be a bit of a hit and miss with a 3m high precision tapes they're quite delicate and they're quite precise but you know sometimes you get paint sipping underneath them whereas with the frock tape or the painter's tape they come with an inbuilt paint block technology that produces sharp paint lines or masking lines as well as the block paint or prevent paint from sipping or getting underneath the um, the frock tape the downside is that when you're trying to get the frog tape off the painted wall um, sometimes you get paint peeling it doesn't matter if you're doing it correctly at 45 degrees you're taking out you know the, the masking tape off at 45 degrees you can still get you know paint peeling some of the reasons could be that the paint hadn't dried properly before you started you know on doing the masking tape it could be that you applied too much force it could be that the removal angle was incorrect it could also be that you know you had like a budget kind of paint on your wall so the wall was primed it was just one overcoat wasn't too strong okay in the bathroom that's not well ventilated when you have steam consistently you know seeping in through the paint you know it's, it's only you know expected that when you're trying to get the paint to stay off the wall that it will peel okay but not to worry click on the link in the description and you will find links as to how to rework the you know the paint peeling but you know a quick overview as to how to sort it would be to get your painter's knife or your scraper scrape out the paint sandpaper prime if necessary and give it two or three overcoats you know following the base coat but just make them thin applications okay and so you can see here i'm taking up the masking tape and also reworking inconsistencies and because I've taken out the old seal and taken out the foreign object debris, used the microfiber cloth to clean it, you know, scrape it off, then paint it over it. The new sealant that has been applied with the green frog painters tape, you know, sits in perfectly, you know, um, aesthetically looks good, you know, a lot better, you know, than the previous how it sat, you know, with the with the old sealant. You know, in my opinion, it doesn't look as tacky as it was before. So from here onwards, I'll be visually inspecting, you know, the sealant where I find defects. I just rework it and repeat and reproduce the process un until I'm satisfied. OK, and if you want something incisive or more in depth as to, you know, how I got the sealant, how I choose the profile and, you know, um, you know, how I selected the appropriate um, sealant, you know, click on the link in the description. OK, it also pretty much covers how to um, reseal the bath you know with, with sealant in your bathroom and in this instance because I am applying the sealant between the tiles and the collared um, wall I wouldn't wait for the sealant to dry for about 24 hours before I take off the, the frock tape I will take out the um, frock tape whilst the sealant is somewhat still soft okay because if I take it out when you know the sealant is fully dried um, I may have peeling on the paint and that would just you know be more laborious to to rework the process so it's always you know best to think about what you're doing if it was in the bathtub where you've just got the tile and the, and the bathtub I'm not really um, worried because it's all white anyways and you don't have any peeling on the tiles but with you know a colored um, wall uh, you want to be sensible about and um, when you take off the, you know the frock tape the upper part where I've got the tile so looks fine you know I've taken up the masking tape looks absolutely br brilliant but when I look underneath the wash basin as, as soon as I start taking off the the painter's tape there you know the paint starts peeling off but not to worry it, you can always rework it you know it's a sacrifice you pay and um, sometimes when you are trying to you know use different colors on your wall okay you wet the peeled paint, you know, scrape it off with the sandpaper, clean it with a microfiber cloth and paint over it, yeah? And underneath, you know, I've got some peeling, so I've just pretty much reworked it with the process as previously stated. 
And now that you've got the hang of it, we're just going to repeat and reproduce the process, you know, on the plastic that's behind the cistern tank. So I have taken off a large chunk, you know, of the sealant that's between the plastic and the wall. And that's because the olive green paint that latched onto the sealant wasn't looking good aesthetically. And you can see that, you know, the old sealant is very, very flexible, very stretchy, very durable and takes a tremendous amount of force to even to even break it. And just, you know, merely looking at the size of the sealant that was taken out, you know, between the plastic and the wall. Um, it's pretty evident that you would need no less than three sealant cartridges to fill it back in. To save time, you know, I did some masking on the white plastic, you know, and painted the area where the previous sealant sat on, you know, so you can see, you know, right through, you know, at the bottom of, you know, the, the green painted wall, you can see that it's all painted green there. The next step as before would be to tape the gap between the wall and the plastic, you know, pretty much where I would want to fill in the new um, silicone sealant. And I pretty much used, you know, the um, old sealant that was taken out the huge chunk to work out, you know, the, the profiling tool that would be needed, you know, to spread the sealant over once it's, once it's filled in, as well as, you know, the amount of sealant that um, would be required, okay? This definitely will consume, you know, a lot of sealant, but just keep filling the, um, the gap, you know, between the wall and the plastic up until it fills up, you know, push fit the... Um, the sealant in you know by squeezing on the trigger of the sealant gun you can work the sealant you know in segments or sections you know one section or segment one at a time okay your profiling tool should corroborate or match the gap that you're trying to spread the sealant over so at this stage i will be finishing you know the sealant and spreading it so that it's smooth and you know the painter's tape provides that crisp line you know when you remove the tape afterwards so I'm going to repeat and reproduce the process for the other corners, you know, around the um, the white plastic. And you can see, the, you know, the sizable chunk, you know, kind of like helps me to work out um, the size of the profile tool that I'll be needing to um, spread the sealant, um, you know, through the gap. And before I use the Fuji Kit profile tool, you know, at first, you know, um, squeeze, you know, a sizable amount of, of silicone sealant, you know, between the wall and the and the white plastic. At this stage, I will squeeze or push fit as much silicone sealant between the gap, ensuring that it fills, you know, the crevices or the apertures around the um, white plastic, and then subsequently use the Fuji profile kit to spread the sealant, you know, in the gap, you know, to finish it, to make it quite smooth. Look for tiny bits of holes, you know, during the application. Anywhere you find holes, make sure you smoothen them out and you, you press fit and smoothen them out, okay? And whilst the sealant is still soft, you know, get the masking tape off. And like I said, paint peeling comes with the territory. So just repeat the process, you know, the rework process. You know, like I said, you know, um, use your scraper's knife, take out the, the scrap bits, you know, um, use your sandpaper, sandpaper, clean with a micro microfiber cloth and paint over again. But this time around, you can see where I've got them yellow tape. So I've kind of reworked it and painted over the minute test of detail. So wherever I've got imperfections after paint removal, you know, I keep on using them tapes, you know, up until I'm satisfied that, you know, I've got a crisp fine line. Okay. Suffice to say, there's no telling what you're going to find behind the tape, even if you're taking up the, the tape correctly um, at 45 degrees, you know. So I'll speed up the drying process, you know, lightly with um, a hairdryer and subsequently take the remainder of the tapes, you know, off the um, sealant to see if, you know, the imperfections are still there. And from all indications, they're gone. So I'm pretty satisfied with the results, okay? So just remember when you're playing with contrasting colors, you know, it could be between, you know, a, an olive green wall and a white green wall or an olive green paint and the white sealant. Um, detailing, you know, is very important as your lines tend to um, be more evident or stand out. OK, so you can see here it's more, more crispy. It's more like, you know, the sealant is sitting, you know, on the um, on the wall as opposed to the wall sitting on the um, sealant. And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you soon. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.